KCM Wealth Management. Vancouver Lawyers, Dumoulin Boscovich. Vancouver Courier Newspaper. David and Mark Goodman. I should ask our guest, our guest is Dr. Uh, Max Sinatter. He is the director of the Brain Research Center at UBC, uh, which is doing phenomenal work uh, uh, on the brain and uh, just uh, was gifted $15 million and is going to make a huge expansion. Dr. Max, before we go to uh, uh, talking about youngsters, about children, uh, I just want to ask you, how is your pregenual anterior cingulate cortex? It's intact, I believe. <laughs> good. <laughs> Which is a good sign. What is it? Actually, it's a part of your brain. Yes. Uh, it's involved in uh, uh, regulation of your emotions. I actually met oh, a person really? who'd had it taken out because she was you know, extremely hyper-aggressive. She became more placid. Are you serious? Yeah, I've never about, heard of that. Yeah, well, this is recently in modern No, it wasn't times? recently. No, it was, that I sounds like lobotomy. 30 years ago. Well, it's, yeah, you're taking out a piece of the brain. You know, because that's obviously a desperate situation. That, because this uh, person she was, was uncontrollably uncontrollable aggressive. And, and, you know, this was also about 35 years ago, and I, I didn't do it. You know, I was just... Yeah, I'm I was glad just, to hear uh, that. I was yeah. just, you know... You I noticed saw, it. You uh, saw well, it. I met her. I thought, yeah. oh, this is kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, but, spooky. Uh, Look, yeah, one of, spooky. One, one of the uh, people uh, that you work with who works in, in your team, Dr. Song, just yep. just has been talking recently on your website about using anti-inflammatories like aspirin and ibuprofen yep. uh, as as a precautionary help with potential Alzheimer's. Yeah, so there's you know uh, there are several different uh, religions, if I can use that term, yes. in the uh, in the in the Alzheimer's uh, field. One of them are the Baptists, um, and that's called because there's a protein called beta amyloid, so they call them the <laughs> Baptists, yeah, yeah. and that's what actually causes the plaques to form. So uh -huh. the people who think the plaques are everything are called the Baptists. Okay. And there's the Taoists. Oh. And there's another protein called Tau yeah. that uh, turns into uh, yeah. you know fibrils. Uh, uh, and so some people think that's important. And the third church is yes. the church of the inf of the brain inflammation. Uh -huh. And there's really evidence to support all those things. And uh, several people in our center, including uh, Dr. Pat McGear, who's been there a uh, long yes, time, course, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, and is uh, you know very well known uh, uh, scientist, and uh, Wee Hong Song, uh, who's also in our center, um, you know, have really shown that in the brain of an Alzheimer's patient you have all these markers of inflammation. There's really? a lot, yeah. yeah. And the question is always, is this cause or is this effect? So it's the, we know that there's inflammation, but is yeah. this what is making, killing the neurons, making things worse, or is the disease causing inflammation? But now it looks as though there's a fair amount of evidence that the, this inflammatory process is actually very important. Yeah. So and is actually part of the problem and is part of what goes out of control. You can think of it as a smoldering inflammation, and over time this damages uh, the brain. So what uh, Dr. Song is suggesting, and Dr. McGear, he might say similar things, uh, is that it doesn't hurt to take an anti-inflammatory, right? Like an aspirin or a, uh, a Tylenol. You know there are other inflammatories, and uh, you know people are working with ibuprofen. People right. are working on other kinds of uh, what are called COX-2 inhibitors, right. um, and um, some of these things are working their way through clinical trials. Okay. Okay. okay let's, so, let, let, so, let, let's switch to children. I, t I okay. tell you why I'm asking. I read a marvelous, a fascinating article in the New Yorker about three, four weeks ago okay. about something called ACE, Adverse Childhood Experience. Uh, and of course, it's, it's the 
you know, the content of literature and lore that, you know, that Pip or Great Expectations or Oliver right. Twist or whoever, you know, you have bad childhood experiences. The likelihood is you, you might have, there's a strong likelihood you could have a difficult adult life, okay? But that's just anecdotal and literary and so on. But but they are sure claiming <laughs> well they're claiming now in this article mm -hmm. that there are real markers. They're doing research that is beyond anecdotal and finding that kids who have very, very difficult early lives yeah. are really marked for failure. Seriously yeah, marked for failure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well you say absolutely. Well I say that um, you know one of the things that we've learned about the brain is that you know, the first few years, the period of early development, is a very, very important Crucial. time. Crucial. Because yes. how you use or misuse your brain in those first few years of your life can really set you up for the rest of your life, or misset you up yes. for the rest of your life. So I don't find this, uh, you, know, you know, what you're saying to be surprising. I agree with it. Um, there have been, for instance, many studies of, um, there was a, an extensive series of studies with the Romanian orphans. You, yes. you, you may have heard of the, you know, these kids were basically dumped into these orphanages, stuck in cribs. They got food, but, yeah, but that was about it. no stimulation, no, yeah. s no love, uh, no, uh, not, you know, reduced, dramatically reduced social interactions. It's a, you know, these kids were not normal. And then later on, when you try to get them a 10 or 12 or something like this, this is a huge problem. These kids are very, very difficult to fix. And if you look at things like, for instance, the markers of their stress response system, they are, every, you know, the things that you and I don't find stressful, they go. Yes, of course. Yeah. So, and you do a lot of work at, at uh, your center for in mental health and addictions. Yes, and I, we certainly I have a whole do. addictions background, yeah. so that fascinates me. And, and, and certainly, I mean, it's observable by anybody working in that field yeah. that, that inevitably people have really bad history. Yeah, they have bad histories. I yeah. mean, you know, the people, you know, on the downtown east side, as far as I'm concerned, they're people who have a whole series of brain problems. You know, they, uh, addiction to me yes. is a brain disease. Okay. Well, they, uh, they, for, they, for me it isn't, but, 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 but the well, two of us probably. Put it this yeah. way, it's a brain disease in yes. the sense that um, there was a study a few years ago that showed that if you, you know, they, they did a study of um, uh, people who'd had strokes and they found yes. this guy, very interesting, uh, who had a stroke and it affected this area called the insular cortex. He was a two-pack-a-day smoker before the stroke. Beautiful. After the stroke, yeah. completely lost interest in cigarettes. Completely really? Completely lost his cravings. Absolutely. So we don't recommend and, uh, strokes uh, for smokes. No, no, yeah. no, of, of, you know, yeah. Of course, that's not the cure, but yeah. uh, you know. But what it is, knowledge is power. You know what oh, this. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. this actually tells us is that there is a piece of the brain, and we, you know. So uh, pe other workers have now gone on and looked at lots of different people and yeah. uh, who've had strokes. And basically, if it involves this area, yes. the chances are that your addiction, whether it's an addiction to alcoholism or to yes. alcohol or yeah. to cigarettes, is really going to be attenuated. Then what this patient said that was so amazing, it was. It's as though my body forgot that it wanted to smoke. Interesting. Interesting. Very so interesting. So to me, that tells me, yeah. is this a brain disease? Well, it sure sounds like the brain's very clearly involved in this. And actually, one of our teams, uh, headed by uh, Dr. Yu Tian Wang and Tony Phillips in our center, yes. has now developed a peptide that will block the cravings of addiction. Really? Yeah. Ouch. Okay, we got to hear more about so, that. But not so right. anyway, so that's okay. not what okay. we were talking okay. about. We we're talking okay. about, uh, okay, we're, you know, we're talking about early childhood. Yeah. Let me let me just you know yes. uh, 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 continue that thought. There's more and more evidence that what goes on early in your life will really affect the way your brain is then wired up. So we know that the stress response system yes. actually gets set up by is regulated for the rest of your life by what happens to it early in life. So if you have a very stressful childhood, you can then see later on, if you measure things like cortisol secretion or a lot of other, we're, we're now developing genetic tests or what are called epigenetic tests of your stress response system. Yes. You can see that they're set different. They're wired up different. 
in yes, these yes, yes. in these kids who are yes. now adults yes. uh, than they than they are in other uh, people who had so, a some people will take in a situation relatively calmly consider it and choose an action other people just react that's right yeah. Yeah. and yeah. so it's not entirely due to uh, you know your childhood, yeah, but yeah, basically yeah. it's determined by the parents that you've chosen yeah, to have. Yeah. You know yes, your, yes, yes. your genetic history. Yeah, there's and some wiring there. there. There's oh, absolutely. Okay. There's wiring there. There's there's predetermination there. But then it's also massively influenced by the the things that happen to you. And there's a new science called epigenetics. Yes. And we are world leaders in this area. We're actually doing studies here in uh, in Vancouver in collaboration with uh, the Center for Molecular Medicine and Therapeutics on kids who are, you know, who have really bad upbringings and yes. looking we think we can see the epigenetic signature by looking at really? at this epigenetic wow. pathway. We think we can see what social class they're going to be in. Doc, doc that's amazing stuff. It's, Look, it's I just amazing. have a couple of minutes left with you, and we, obviously we could do hours, but so I want to ask very quickly about a, a huge area that seems so mystifying, and that's schizophrenia, because we talked about m mental health and addiction, but schizophrenia to me, and I might be wrong here, almost seems in a class of its own. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. It's a it's a heck of a problem. You know, it seems to just pop out. Here's yeah. here's a kid. Typically, you see a kid who's a perfectly wonderful kid. Suddenly, at 19, she never washes. She she starts fighting. She, she was an A student Wednesday. Now she's crazy. Yeah, no, it's it's an amazing phenomenon. Yes. You've identified some. Of, you've identified the key features. First of all, it is an age. It's a developmental disorder. Ah. The, okay. You know, it's not always at 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it often shows. It up often or... shows up uh, at it, that age. Yes. Uh, it has a strong heritable component. Uh huh. So you know, the incidence is one in a hundred. Yes. But if you have an identical twin with schizophrenia, chances, the chances are 50 percent. So that tells you that it's heritable, but it also tells you that it's not completely determined. Yes. It's not 100 percent. Yeah, yeah. And there are so many theories of schizophrenia. There is. You know, there are, we, we know that there's a strong hereditary component. We think that it has to do with, you know, the de with developmental changes that occur in the brain that most likely uh, are peaking at this particular age, the sort of late teenage, early 20 age. But we still do not have a smoking gun. Okay, let me, let me just add, because we just have about a minute left. Are we getting better, because I've watched painfully friends go through this, are we getting better at getting the right uh, uh, med mix for people with schizophrenia? Because it seemed to me for a long time people were trying 42 different things before they found something that really worked for patient A. You know, I think we're, we're getting better, but to be blunt, I think we're getting better slowly. Okay. You know, Fair enough. I think yeah. uh, we still have a long way to go to really understand what actually goes wrong in the brain of a schizophrenic, how somebody can be perfectly okay and maybe a little quirky and two uh, months la la later be last a question. complete loony. Last question. Yeah. Are, are we studying the brains of, of the righteous and the accomplished and the and the and the and geniuses are, yeah. we, are yes. we yes yes we are, are we looking yes. at people who perform yes we are we are we oh, have good. a you know there's a big study going on for uh, for people who have uh, terrific autobiographical memories that remember all the details of their lives <laughs> yeah. uh, you know we're studying that two percent of the population that are yeah. terrific multitaskers yes. it's important you know the new Center for Brain Health is not just going to be the Center for Brain Diseases. It's going to be a place where we study brain health, how we make the brain better for everybody. Dr. Max, we're out of time. Thank it, you very it's much. great. I forgot to mention, by the way, uh, our guest is, uh, among other things, an Order of Canada and Order of British Columbia. It's a great pleasure to have you here. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, anyway, that was terrific, uh, folks. Look, uh, thanks for being with us. Uh, again, davidburner.com is the website uh, for all things social media. And uh, next week, uh, delighted to tell you that Ted Topping, uh, who has his own company called Creative Strategies, Inc., will join us and will ask the question, how would you recognize good service if you ever found it in Canada? <laughs> Thanks for being with us here on Shaw Community TV, Cable 4. Good night. <laughs>